Major corporations in this country are required to pay a 35% tax rate. But according to the Government Accountability Office, some of the most profitable U.S. companies pay half of that rate. Well, they did in 2010. We're talking about companies like Walmart, Apple, and Google, who are finding loopholes in the system to avoid paying their required tax rate. So what gives? And how are these companies getting away with this? Well, joining me to talk about that topic is author and economist Dean Baker. Hi there, Dean. So let's just jump right into it. Why are, the, why are we seeing these major differences in the federal tax rate of 35 percent and the effective rate for, mo for most corporations? Well, there's a whole set of loopholes that these companies have become absolutely expert at, at taking advantage of. For example, General Electric often pays no taxes, one of the most profitable country, companies in the country. Often they're able to find ways to hide their profits and end up paying little or no, no, no taxes. Um, one of the main ones is simply as long as you keep profits overseas, you don't have to pay tax on that. And many companies have taken advantage of that to keep much of their profits overseas. Also, one of their standard tricks, uh, Apple's done this with great, uh, with great success, they declare taxes in, in tax havens, so Ireland. You see Apple makes a huge share of their profit in Ireland. They don't actually make you know, that much in Ireland, but that's where they declare their profit. It's very difficult for the IRS to keep track of that. So there's a large number of tax loopholes that allow them to evade much of their tax obligation. Okay. Well, do you think the incentive for some of these companies to keep this tax rate low or, or let them go through these loopholes is because they supply Americans with jobs? Does it really balance out? No, it's not helping get jobs at all. In fact, quite the opposite. I mean, you know, to some extent, it gives companies an incentive to relocate overseas so they could hide taxes there. I don't think that's a big factor in terms of their relocating overseas, but it can be a factor. But the idea that somehow they wouldn't give us jobs if they paid a higher tax rate. In fact, if you look historically, you actually had much higher rates of investment back in the 70s when they were paying much higher taxes. So there's just really no, no story there whatsoever. I mean, what you can say is it's good not to have companies waste a lot of resources trying to game the system. So the idea of perhaps having a somewhat lower rate that actually was enforced, you know, if instead of having 35 percent, we had 30, 28, I don't know what the magic number is, but you got rid of much of the loopholes, I think that would be a huge winner. But it's a very, very difficult thing to negotiate because all the loopholes are real money for people. Okay. So the incentive is the less the hassle if it's not American jobs? That's right. Well, it's it, there's nothing here about jobs. It really is just that companies don't want to give up their tax breaks. And obviously, it, they have a lot of political power. It's very hard to work on an arrangement where they're going to do that. Okay. Well, how does how does this affect the average the average everyday American? If they're paying this low tax rate, I mean, who's picking up the slack? Well, the rest of us are obviously. So the point is, there's less money. You could think of it however you like. That we're, we're the rest of us have to pay more in taxes. Alternatively, we're getting less in government services than would otherwise be the case. Now, at the moment, you know, we're not really limited by that in the sense that if the deficit were twice as large, we'd be fine. We don't really need to balance the budget. But if one thinks over a long run. If we're getting less from the corporations, that has to somehow be made up from the rest of us. Mm -hmm. What does this say about our tax system? If this is legal, they're doing it legally, what does that say about us? Yeah, well, it's not the way you want to run your country. I mean, you want to have taxes that people actually take seriously and that whatever rate you have, whether it's 35, whether it's 20, whatever it might be, you'd want to think people, that's what people are actually paying, not basically they pay what they feel like paying. Okay. What would be a fair system? Break this down for me. Well, there's two ways you can go. One of, the, one of the proposals a lot of people have been putting forward is something that's done at the state level where companies pay a share of their profit depending on where their sales are. So a big issue, again, is this foreign issue. So if you say, you know, 40 percent of your sales are in the United States, we don't care where you say your profits are. You're, we're going to treat 40 percent of that as being in the United States, and you're going to pay tax on 40 percent of your profits. That's a relatively simple way to go. As I say, a number of state governments already have systems like that for state tax. That would be doable. The other thing that I think is very interesting, it's an old proposal that goes back, way back to E.F. Schumacher. I think it was in the 60s that he wrote about this, where he said, why don't we let companies out of the tax altogether? We'll let them give us a percent of their stock. Let's say it's 20 percent, I'm pulling a number out of the air. Give us 20 percent of your stock, non-voting, and we get treated exactly the way your shareholders get treated. That way it removes any possibility of hiding, you know, hiding your money here or there because if you're paying out dividends, if your shareholders are getting the money, the government's getting the money. That I think is a very interesting way to go. Mm -hmm. well, what do you make of the argument of corporations, if we held them to that standard of a 35 percent tax, they would just move offshore, take their businesses and their jobs. Is, there an, is that true? 
You find very little evidence for that. I mean, they, they don't all go to the lowest tax. You know, they don't literally locate. They might have a post office box in the Cayman Islands, but they don't try to do business in the Cayman Islands. So, you know, again, this is something naturally they're going to say, but there's all sorts of good reasons why companies are going to want, the companies that are in the United States are going to be, want to be in the United States. The idea they're going to pick up and leave because the taxes are too high, I'm not going to say it's zero, but again, we have a lot of evidence on that. It's going to be very few. Mm, well, very good to hear from you, sir. Thank you for weighing in. That's all we have time for. It was author and economist Dean Baker.